Hey everybody, Paul from Better Chess, and I'm going to start covering the 2024 Washington Open adult section. This is a four round Swiss, and I'm going to talk about my game in round one. Let's start and dig in here. I'm paired against a 1300, so there's about a 572 rating point difference in my favor. And let's uh, start the game, and I'll annotate as I go here. So the game starts in the Sicilian defense. Uh, I play this uh, traditional um, G6, which is the accelerated dragon. And my opponent, again, 1300, he's been playing a very long time. He's very good at defensive chess. And I think what most of you would agree with is often when you're paired with a, a lower-rated player, they go into defensive mode. They are happy to trade and just be very solid. And this is a lot of how this game transpires, as, as you'll see. So knight g3, bishop g7. This is all mainline theory. <clears throat> he goes bishop e3. And again, um, nothing shocking or different. You know, it's, it's a traditional accelerated dragon. I play knight f6. He takes. That's a little premature. Normally it's like bishop c4 and, you know, the game continues and or even knight b3, but he takes. Kind of aggressive. So the best way to capture here is with the b pawn. And the reason why is I want to continue to control the square. Uh, I could capture with the d pawn. Then he trades queens, and I don't want to give him anything to trade. Right? I want to keep the game as, as complicated as possible with as many pieces on the board. But then he goes back to mainline theory. you got to give him credit here. Bishop c4. He could play e5 too, but this is, this is perfectly acceptable. So I castle, uh, and he plays, again, the right move, bishop b3. Now, if he just castled immediately, I have this 94 shot, right? So if he, just real quickly, I'm not going to go too deep into the analysis here. If I castle, I can capture on e4. And if he takes, I have d, you know, d5, and it's, it's still equal, but uh, it's a little tricky. But he just avoids all this. He just plays bishop b3, gets out of the way, which is a... Smart idea. And dead equal again. Now, here I started to think, like, okay, I just sort of played, I'm going to say a little silly, like I played queen a5. The threat is I'm just threatening to take uh, the, the e4 pawn. But it's not really much of a threat because he just captures, uh, he just castles. Um, if, I, if you recall my video from the previous tournament, I was just getting the rust out of my system in the last tournament, right? The last round of the uh, Senior Championship 2024. And there's still a little bit of that left, although it's a little better. So anyway, I play d6, just carefully developing my pieces, opening the bishop diagonal. He plays rookie one, which is not terrible. Uh, queen d2 is probably a little bit better, maybe with the idea of uh, trading off the the g7 bishop, but your, your rookie one is fine. Um, and now I have a move which I didn't play, but I should have played, and again, I'm very tentative, is uh, knight g4. That's, that's a very solid move. It gives me a slight advantage, but, but I didn't. I'm just, I'm very paranoid about activity and, and trade, so I play the not-so-great bishop e6, which now equalizes for white. He takes on e6, I take back. And again, the, the problem is just, you know, this is a, a problem, an issue here. During the game, I didn't really think it was because I said, hey, I got a lot of control of this square. What am I really worried about? But, but you'll see that this becomes an issue later on. Right? So then he, uh, he kind of backs up his bishop to d2, which is slow. I put my queen on a relatively good square on b6, figuring it, you know, it's going to hit f2, it's going to hit b2. What can go wrong here? So again, remember when I said players like to go into defensive mode sometimes, and that's what he does. He just plays rook b1. And right away I saw this move, knight g4. Instantly saw it. I figured this is a great move. Wow, knight g4, what does he do here? If he captures, I have check. He hits me with check because of the e6 uh, weakness right after he moves his king. But I take on d2, again, he checks me, I move, he takes uh, bishop e5, and I just felt this was very complicated. He has rookie two moves, queen h6, exclam, hitting the, the weakness and threatening mate. He has no other move but to play g3, I can take. 
Uh, and I'm winning this year. I have a decisive advantage. But I didn't see this deep during the game. I was a little intimidated. Um, so on Rook B1, I just said, you know what, I, I don't want to take any chances here. So I just played the passive, not wrong, but passive, not D7. Which, again, it's back to equality again. My advantage is completely gone. Dead equal. And uh, he plays bishop e3. You know, why not? I play queen c7. That's not a very active square. I should probably put the queen on b4, which is a little better. You know, queen b4, I have a little more sway and activity. I can, I'm threatening to take on c3 for one. But um, putting it on c7, it's a little too passive. But just, again, dead equal. Um I, I will say just very quickly, Queen C7 probably gives White a little advantage, even though it's a small one, because you know I have issues now. And uh, what does he do? He plays uh, Bishop D4, trying to trade off material. I oblige him. I say, sure, go right ahead. Take, take. I have an open F file. Let's see what I can do with this. Game is still equal. And I play E5. I'm like, you know what? Let's let's start expanding. I see the juicy D4 square, and I'm thinking maybe I can do a, a maneuver of you know knight to C5 to E6 to D4. I don't know. Also, the, the other square is this square here is, is available. Let's just see what happens. So he plays Queen E3, and this guy's 1300. He's playing very solidly. And I start my journey. Remember, knight C5. I'm gonna pop into E6, and then he he plays. Again, a good move. Queen H3. Now, there were other moves in the position. Probably knight D1 was an idea, too, to kind of get the knight out of danger and, and, and recirculate it maybe to E3 itself. But uh, this is not too terrible. You know, Queen H3, again, hitting the wiki, preventing knight E6. Um, I thought about this a while. I was confused. So then I decided um, I'm just going to play rook F6. Reinforce e6 so I can move the knight. He plays rook e2. Not sure what that move is about. Probably just kind of defending on f2 and making sure that the square is under control. So I pop into the e6. Now I'm threatening a fork. So he's got to be careful. And I have the advantage again. And he plays rook back to e1. <laughs> rook e to e1. And you're probably thinking, oh, that's a bad move. It's passive. It doesn't do much. Fair. But I don't have an answer. Right? It's, 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 very, it's very solid. I'm a little better. I have the initiative, but there's, there's no uh, haymaker yet. So the game continues, right? I just say, all right, I'm going to double my rooks. Uh, you know, and then he's going to play probably f3, but I still have a good advantage. I'm going to play knight f4, and then things are looking pretty good here. So he plays rook f1. Again, very passive, but he's just going to defend. That's what he's going to try and do. And then I make, make a, a, a sort of a strange move. Instead of moving to knight f4, which is one idea... I play uh, knight to d4. Um, Thakush likes actually something a little more, uh, a little less obvious, which is queen b6, hitting that weak f2 pawn, keeping a lot of pressure on it. But didn't do that. And also preventing f3, which is a really good idea. So anyway, knight, yeah, knight d4, eh, it's okay. I still have an advantage, but a slight one. Then he plays queen d3, just keeping an eye on the knight e2 ideas, and now he can bring his own knight to e2. Right? So, again, the game is just dead equal, but I still feel I have a pretty good edge. So I, I decide, let's, let's invade on the light squares here. I go to queen d7, right? With, you know, eyeing these, these diagonals and maybe hopping into the g4 square. Yeah, chess is about square control, right? And it's just about trying to control as much of the board as possible. And that's what I'm trying to do here. So again, queen d3 allows now 92. That's the reason he played it. And um, I know he wants to trade. He wants to trade more than anything right now. But uh, I'm not going to allow that. So I play a good move here. I play uh, 96, not not allowing him any movement there. Uh, now he should play something that just f3, make it a rock-solid position. But he doesn't. He plays knight g3 which is giving me a little bit more of an advantage. Now I can just jump into f4, so knight f4, hitting with a whole bunch of stuff. And now my attack is a little more obvious. I mean, this, this position right here is equal, but now I'm going to play moves like h5, h4, you know, maybe march my pawn down the board and create some issues for him, which could be a problem. 
So he hits me with queen b3 check. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. I just move my king up. Then he plays rook b to d1. And now here comes my attack. And now he's, his, his passiveness is starting to get the best of him, right? So now I play h5. Only move to keep the initiative. And I'm much better. He should have just played h3 here, and he's worse, but he, the game continues, but he doesn't. He inadvertently plays knight h1, forgetting that, in fact, knight e2 is mate. So as I put my hand on my knight to play knight e2 mate, he resigned. So a, a quick recap. If you want to see the detailed notes of my game, uh, the link is in the description. But I just wanted to show how even players who are much lower rated can put up a good fight and you have to consistently put pressure on them not allow trades create threats and i didn't really do that i played passively and i very nearly you know got out of this with a bit of a draw maybe and um anyway that was round one round two coming next thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video